how we do. Return to the noise is how we do. How we do. You know is how we do. Hey everybody, welcome to the Crown Peach Show. I'm your host, Chris, and with me today I have a very special guest, actor Rolando Gonzalez. Hi. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you for being here. I know it wasn't around the corner for you. No. How was the drive? Not bad, actually. Really? Not bad. I usually drive to LA, so it's a little bit further. All the way from there to, I'm not going to tell people where you live, because, okay. you know, girls be crazy, girls <laughs> be crazy. I'm from San Diego. I'm from San okay. Diego. Okay. You put it out there, not me. Okay. <laughs> so normally you drive from San Diego to LA. Absolutely. Okay. So this was like an hour quicker for you, right? Mm, yeah. Just depending on, Kinda. on traffic. Kind of. What do you listen to on, on your drive? Um, motivational music or like really like self-development okay. people. Okay. I like that. Is there someone specific that you like to listen to in general or just anything that, that catches your ear? Any, like I like mashups mm -hmm. of them, but I like like Les Brown, Gary Vee, Tony Robbins, um, Eric Thomas. Like okay. I listen to like the, the greats of yeah. the motivational speaker industry. Yeah, Tony Robbins. Like, yeah, he's been around for a long time and he is a great. He is. It's authentic. I feel like with him, it's really authentic. It's from his heart, what totally. he has to say. Totally, and you could feel it. Yeah. I mean, you could feel it. I've seen him in person once. No way. And yeah, it was pretty amazing. It was it was really weird because it was like he had a whole room mm -hmm. of sober people and it was like they were drinking. They were on they were on that much of a natural high. That much of a natural high, yeah. Wow. Okay, so we're gonna back it up though, because I wanna know more about you and I know that your fans and the viewers wanna know more about you. I wanna take it way back and I wanna find out where did you grow up? San Diego, California. Really? Yes. And you, okay, Home. I didn't expect that. That's cool. <laughs> Home. So all, your whole life. Yes, I love it there. I'm never going to leave. <laughs> okay. Nope. I did leave for like 10 years uh -huh. um, and went to the Inland Empire. Okay. And um, I came back. There's nothing I can do. I'm, I'm what do you love so much about San Diego besides it being home? Uh, it's like LA, mm -hmm. but with out a lot of the BS that LA has, uh -huh. you know, like there's just not enough, as much crime. There's not as much traffic. There's, it's just beautiful. This is, this is where people go to retire. Yes. Like, I don't have to travel to go sightsee. I can go sightsee. Yeah. In city. It's like you live in a vacation. I live in paradise. That's awesome. I love that. Okay. So what was little Rolando like? Really little. <laughs> I was smaller than all the other kids. You were smaller than average? Uh, yes. How did that smaller. affect you, like being um, the smaller one? It was not always fun, mm -hmm. but I still like played with the bigger kids. Yeah. Like I still um, met a lot of girls, mm -hmm. even though I was shorter than them all. <laughs> so <laughs> I still had a really good time. I had a really great childhood, but... Um, as I got older, it wasn't like little Rolando anymore. Like yeah. I started, you know, having growth spurts. Oh, okay. So when did that happen for you? Like 12 years old, 13? Like 22. Oh. <laughs> At 22. <laughs> You're all, I'm still growing, okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, like probably 17, 18 years old. Oh, okay, um, yeah. You know, but I was always like super skinny too. Uh -huh. That's another thing. And then I start. I got really fat, right? And so... At what age did you get chunky? Oh, man. I think I was like maybe 24, 25. Oh, okay. Just... So you were grown already. So you can't blame your parents for you getting right. chunky. Right. I was going to the bars. Like I was uh, eating Mexican food mm. after the bar. Oh, okay. And I was just... 2 a.m.? Yes. And just <laughs> not... And just drinking a lot and not yeah. at all caring about my So health. you were a skinny kid. Very skinny. Which is, is in our culture, not the norm. Do you know what I mean? Most of us are like gorritos. You know what I mean? Like chunky and... <laughs> You know, I didn't really think about it then. Yeah, you know, you're I welcome. I was just skinny. Yeah, <laughs> just I was just skinny. Bring it to your attention now. Now, I mean, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm conscious of it, but I didn't think about it then. Maybe you had it? a fast metabolism as a child. I wish I still did. <laughs> I know. Don't we all? <laughs> Me too. Me too. I wish like instantly it would just roll off after we ate it. So 22 is when you got a little bit heavier. Uh, yeah, like 23, 24. I just really drank a lot and ate a lot of bad food. Yeah. That'll, that'll do it. That'll oh, do totally, it. Totally, totally. So when did you, um, well, first of all, as a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? The first thing I ever said I wanted to be was an actor. Really? Yes. That's awesome. That gave me chills because a lot of times you, you hear other things. Like, I want to be a cop or a fireman. But you knew as a child that's what you wanted to do. I think that just came from my spirit because I don't know where, like, I, I don't know where I even had the idea of mm -hmm. that. Um, have you ever done, like, inner child healing? No. Okay, so 
I did some inner child healing once, and what came up for me was my father never played with me. Oh, okay. And my father, I think he did play with me, mm -hmm. but that's the story I told myself. So my father watched a lot of television. Mm -hmm. And now that I am able to look back, I'm thinking maybe that's why I wanted to be an actor. Oh, wow, that's deep. Right. That is so freaking deep. Right. <laughs> what prompted you to do the, to do the inner child healing? What, what brought that on? Um, I'm just into all types of, of different healing modalities mm -hmm. because I feel like, you know, I didn't think that I grew up in a toxic environment because mm -hmm. I didn't know. Yeah. But I did, you know, and there was a lot of toxicity around me and, and trauma mm -hmm. that I just wasn't aware of. You didn't at know the at the time that it was right. trauma, right? Yeah. Right. So as I got a little bit older, um, I just got into it. I just got into different healing modalities for, I had to be honest with myself mm -hmm. about some of the things, some of my BS, right? Yeah. So as I started seeing things that I needed to change, I also started seeking out, you know, ways to change it. Yeah. That is some very good and profound advice. And I'm going to ask you to talk more on that in our second half, because it sounds like what you did is you saw some things in yourself that you didn't like, and you dug deep to find out where they came from. Mm -hmm. And I think we all could benefit from that. Totally. Especially, especially men, not saying that women are perfect, you know, but we're, we're kind of more in tune with our emotions. You know what I mean? And we express them more than men do. And men sometimes tend to express them in the wrong way because they don't know any better and they don't even know where it's coming from. So I seriously admire you that you did that, that you took the time to find out like what's going on and to heal the inner child. Especially Latino men. Yes. That part. Um, well, Mexican to be specific. Mm -hmm. I, I can't really speak on other Latinos, yeah. but we grow up with toxic masculinity. I mean, machismo, yeah, machismo. is a Mexican word, right? Yeah. And, um, I don't think I was ever, no, I'm, let me not say I don't think. I was never encouraged mm -hmm. to be vulnerable or to express my emotions. Yeah. You know, and so nowadays men have a lot more emotional intelligence. I think there's just more information out there for us. Yes. And, and there's more support. It's at your fingertips. Right. There's more support though as mm -hmm. well. Like other men are also supportive when mm -hmm. before it would be just like, suck it up, buttercup. Yeah, you know, exactly. That's it. Well, men like you that are coming on this platform, small but mighty, and you're sharing your your healing process and what prompted you to, to look at that, like to look at self, you know what I mean? That's a really hard thing to do for anybody is to look at like, why am I doing this? Or, you know, what, it wasn't just one party that caused this. It took two to tango, you know what I mean? Right. Um, What did you see that, that, that told you what you were living was toxic. How did you figure that out? Most of the time, people blame outer circumstances mm -hmm. for their shortcomings. Yeah. You know, and I feel like it's always, I always have to look back on me. Mm -hmm. where, where am I vibrating that I'm creating this reality or where am I vibrating that I'm attracting people with a negative frequency or yeah. something to that effect, right? Like mm -hmm. I had to I had to take some ownership and accountability of my own yeah. um, toxicity, my own, you know, like taking trauma and maybe just transferring it to someone else or mm -hmm. bad energy and transferring it to someone else yeah, rather that than... Part. Yeah, the bad right, energy. Right, rather than looking at it and saying, hey, you know, I can turn this into something positive or yes, this is some not so good fortune that's happening right now, mm -hmm. but ultimately it's for the greater good. Yeah. Right. Wow. I told you, if you live closer to me, remember on the phone, I said, <laughs> we were talking on the phone. I was like, dude, if you live closer, you'd be my sensei. Cause you just had so much wisdom and knowledge to drop in that small conversation we had. And I'm so grateful that you're here on my show now because you have something to share and not only your acting ability, but also your healing abilities. Thank with you. other people i'm grateful to be here as well and i mean i i really don't feel i'm qualified to be anyone else's sensei per se <laughs> yeah but but uh and i feel like you are that for yourself like, mm -hmm. i feel like we all have the answer within right but um it is nice to have some awareness mm -hmm. and to also be truthful with myself because a lot of my life yeah i, I was 
I was pretty much in denial or I was thinking I was playing other people, but mm-hmm. I was really playing myself. Oh, that's deep. We'll get more into that off camera. <laughs> <laughs> more into detail off camera. Okay, so I love that you healed the inner child because now it just seems like, you know, everything you're going to give the world through your acting is going to just be so pure and authentic, but you also still have that that hurt inner child to tap into right. when you need it and pull it out, right? And I don't necessarily feel like I'm completely healed. Like mm-hmm. I'm not like hovering up here and yeah, floating. But you, but and you have else. the formula to do it. You know what I mean? True. There, I have some of the formulas <laughs> yeah. to do some of these things, mm-hmm. but I don't feel like I'm hovering. You know, I, I don't oh, feel yeah. like I'm floating. I, I'm, there's still a lot of work to be done and, mm-hmm. you know, still have to remain a student at all times. Yeah. And I believe the best way is really just being a student of every single person. Yeah. You know, I including ourselves. Mm-hmm. This is true. This is true. So when did the acting bug bite you? Okay, so this is a really strange thing because you <laughs> asked me about when I was a child. When I was a child, the first thing I said is I want to be an actor. Mm-hmm. My mom took me to Hollywood, got me an agent. As a child? As a child. That's awesome. I might have been like seven or eight years old. And um, the toxic masculinity is going to come up right now. Mm-hmm. And so back then, it wasn't like online. You had to call the phone yeah. number and hear the different things. So I never got any kind of an audition. And finally, I get this one audition. But in this audition, you had to know how to roller skate. Okay, well, I have two brothers that have two strikes, right? Like, oh, both shit. my brothers are gang members. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Career criminals. They've been in prison all their lives, and they're like 10 years older than me. Oh, wow. So, so you're the youngest of three. Right. So I thought roller skating was for girls, mm-hmm. you know, or I felt like it was a feminine thing. Yeah. And I didn't want to really do it. So I may have lost out on an opportunity because of the lens I was looking through as a child. Because that's what was instilled in you. But this is all I knew, Uh right? So that's fine, whatever, right? And I just didn't do it, I didn't pursue it. Yeah. Maybe 20 some odd years later, I'm working for what we called an addiction helpline. Mm -hmm. And I had been a phone salesperson for a long time. But I picked up I picked up the phone, I was talking to people about addiction, and um, all of a sudden my boss called me in his office at the time and said, read this, and I just like read off of a piece of paper. And I didn't know, but there was a guy on speakerphone, and the guy said, that's our guy. No so way. they said in like, it was like a Thursday. On Monday, you're shooting a national commercial. Oh my god! For addiction. So I shot a national commercial, and then I put it up on Facebook, ended up connecting with um, an old acquaintance of mine who's Mm -hmm. now like one of my best friends who's a working actor and it just kind of took off from there that's awesome like a domino effect so you didn't do anything as a child acting wise nothing because of that one roller skating thing after that i think i just quit oh okay you know and i don't i know i i feel like we're all actors and we're always acting. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes we act like we're okay and we're not. Yeah. Sometimes we act like we don't care and we do. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of times where we're doing that. So I did a lot of acting, yeah. but I didn't realize it was acting. When did you realize you're acting? Once I got into really acting, <laughs> <laughs> I realized that we're all actors. Oh, okay, you got know? that. So you did the national commercial and then what? Uh, after I did the national commercial, I just like, you know, hooked up with my friend and he kind of showed me, okay, you know, you need to get some headshots, Mm -hmm. you need to go on these websites, you need to start doing this and that. And it was all like a huge domino effect. Like, um, there was one time when he called me and said, Hey, for some reason, this guy looks just like you and he can't make it today. Can you make it? And I'm wow. like, absolutely. Yeah. So I go down to Mexico and I film in a brothel, <laughs> mind you. I film where I'm like a cartel guy and they come in and shoot me. Uh-huh. And, you know, um, it ended up being like number six in the world on Netflix. Oh, I, nice. Right. So, and I was working alongside Mario Van Peebles and Scott Atkins, who mm-hmm. just came out in John Wick 4. Oh, my gosh. Right. So... I feel like it was just uh, like there's the way all of this has happened to me. There's no way it wasn't meant to be. Yeah. When you got that call, was there any part of you that was like, no, 
And then you said yes, or was it just immediately like, yes, I'm going? Oh, it was yes, I'm going. Yeah. I mean, I got an opportunity that most actors don't get. Mm -hmm. And some of these people have been doing this their whole lives since they were a child. Yeah. Right? Like, should I have pursued this when I was a child? There'd probably be a lot more opportunities, but I got You an never know where yeah. you would have ended up, you know what I mean? Totally. If you were a child actor. Totally. But I'm glad I did it later on in life because I didn't have very much emotional intelligence. Like it was all ego. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and uh, you have to have some kind of emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. One for the acting, because it's you're going into different places in yourself and pulling out emotions that yeah. you know, sometimes you suppress. Yeah, and I think that sometimes if your ego is too big, that, that would lose you, you know, the role because you think you're hot shit. Or I think my intention might have been to be a celebrity and not, you know, like master the craft of acting uh -huh. or, or be good at the craft of acting. I would have just wanted the... The fame? Right, the, yeah. the the red carpets and the mm -hmm. and there's nothing. Um, I, I don't want to say there's nothing, but acting isn't luxurious. Mm -hmm. It's really a lot of waiting around. It's a lot of, uh, I mean, being submerged in water at three o'clock in the morning when it's freezing outside and yeah. acting like you're not cold. Yeah, kind of thing. It's not. Um, it's just it's all red all, carpets. Yeah, it's right. not all glamour. Yeah, right? it's not all glamour. Not at all. <laughs> not at all. The, the money isn't good when you're first starting out. I mean, yeah. it's just, there's a lot of things that I could say that are negative about it, uh -huh. but it's so worth it. Yeah, you can tell. Me. From to the, me. From the way you're glowing and you're talking yeah. about it, do you know what I mean? You can tell that you really, really do love it. I love it. That's there's nothing, there's nothing like it. And that's awesome. Now, have you taken any acting classes? Yes, I have. Um, not as many as I should, though. Mm -hmm. I want to continue with the acting classes just because, again, I feel like we're always students. Yeah. And I'm a big student of this craft. I, I just love when I see an actor and they're talking about something. I'm like, wow, I never thought of it that way. Uh -huh. or, or I'll even watch YouTube videos of, of acting classes yeah. and things like that. So, yes, I, I want to take more classes. Where have you gone? Uh, to a place in San Diego. Oh, okay. It was, this is a pretty awesome lady that that teaches down there um but what happened was when i was taking the acting classes the pandemic hit yes and then the acting classes went on zoom calls mm -hmm. and there's just nothing like being in the room and and vibing with somebody mm -hmm. like it's the totally energy. different right it's completely different energy over have you ever zoom done call. any theater no 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 do you want to no. No? <laughs> <laughs> but I do I have... couldn't tell the way you said no. I was like, is that a no, never? Or no, I would love to. You're I totally should. You're such a good should. actor, Rolando. You're such a good actor. <laughs> no, I totally should because I have a lot of respect for it. Mm -hmm. Like, I, the people who are in the theater, I feel like, oh, those are real actors. And I'm, like, someone who can do it 20 times. And yeah. Then, no. And then cut, I, cut, I hear what cut, you're cut, saying. And put it together. Um, I have a lot of respect for those people. And I, I feel like they're elite and above a me. they're just a different breed i totally. think yeah because that seems i would much i don't know it seems kind of nerve-wracking do you know what I mean because you can't stop and like right. oh can we edit that right. the whole audience is right they're like no <laughs> you gotta keep going that's why i don't want to do it but mm -hmm. i think we need to charge towards our fears yes so that just came up I for think me that maybe that's a fear of mine yeah and that just came up for me that you know i should probably charge towards my fears because yeah. otherwise you know, we don't face them and then they end up... You and then know, you're always like, what if? You know totally, I mean? totally, totally. Yeah, not a good feeling. Not a good feeling. I think we're going to take a really quick break and we'll be right back. But during this break, you're going to get to see Rolando in action. Hi. Oh, hey, how are you? I'm good. I didn't realize this home got sold already. Yeah, just last week. Oh, great. I'm Candace, by the way. Oh, that must be your Porsche. Oh, yeah. I work on cars for a living, so I can appreciate a nice ride when I see one. Oh, I thought you were a mover, but you're a mechanic. Well, I guess laborers take on a lot of jobs, huh? Well, anyway, are they inside? Who? The new homeowners, silly. <laughs> I want to meet them. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm Hector. Nice to meet you. Um, maybe you're not understanding. How do I say this in Spanish? Um, El come honors. S. Aqui. Look, I speak English perfectly fine, thanks. But I am the homeowner. I, I just closed escrow. <laughs> Stop 
love it. Come on. This is a really expensive neighborhood. A laborer like you couldn't afford a place like this. I'm not. Hello. Hi, I'm Candace. You must be the new homeowner. Uh, no. No, I'm not. Actually, Hector is. Hey, boss, I gotta get going. Do you need anything else? Nope, all good. As a matter of fact, here's a little sum extra for your hard work. Oh, Great job today. Thank you so much. No Take care, buddy. Thanks. Uh, I'm confused. <laughs> so you really live here? But how? Well, I guess you can say things aren't always what they seem. Right. Well, <clears throat> don't act like you own the place. I'm sure you're just renting. Whatever you say. Hey, look, I gotta finish unpacking. It was really nice to meet you, Candace. Mm-hmm. Hey. Heard we have a new neighbor? Yeah. And we both need to be really careful. There's just something suspicious about him. Only wanna share with y'all like a bird have a bear for y'all. And we are back from the break. I hope you guys enjoyed that acting by Mr. Rolando Gonzalez, Darman. <laughs> what? A, tell me, what, what is that all about? Um, Darman is a guy who's like a huge YouTuber. I think he's the second biggest YouTuber. And uh, he makes life lesson videos. Mm -hmm. And they're a little cheesy, you know, but they're basically just about being morally correct and, and okay. uh, doing the right thing, mm -hmm. right? So um, I auditioned for this, and what is interesting about it is the lady's name was Karen. So I was expecting to get there, and it's a white lady yeah. who's like, Karen, you know, yeah, being a Karen. Stereotypical, yeah, yeah. But I'm not sure, but my reader is a black guy. And when we were reading this together and doing the self-tape, he had a lot of sass in his voice, and you could tell he was a black guy yeah. playing this Candace character. And when I got there, it was a black woman. Oh, okay. So I'm not sure if they made that decision after, mm -hmm. but they called her Candace. Like, Candace like instead Candace, of Karen. Uh, what's her name? Candace Owens. Candace Owens. I don't know if that was the idea, but it yeah. kind of seems like that uh -huh. to me. So I'm not sure if my friend influenced that decision, mm -hmm. but... I got a script and it said Karen. When I got there, it was, it was a lady now. named Shantae who's amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, she just killed it. <laughs> she killed it. <laughs> How fun was that filming it? Uh, it was fun. It was, it was hilarious. Uh, I got to meet some really cool people. And uh, it was nice because then after that, I continued to work with Darman pretty steadily. Oh, that's cool. And I haven't for a little while, but I believe I'm supposed to work with him again on Tuesday. That's awesome. Okay. So given that that was a fun set, have you ever been on a set where it was not so fun and you just, you took the job, so you got to just, you know. Quite a few of them. Really? Yeah. I mean, you know, sometimes the energy on set, um, you could tell people don't get along, mm -hmm. things like that. And um, it just... It is what it is. The, the, one of the things I love about film is that it takes so many people. Like, we all have to, the lights have to be right. The mm -hmm. camera has to be in the right place. Yeah. The actors have to do their thing. The director has to do their thing. It takes a village. The PAs. Yep. You know, everything down to the person buying the snacks. Mm -hmm. like the, the craft, craft service. Yep. Yeah, the yep. craft service. It, is all, it all, you know, comes together. It, it takes a team. There's no one person who can do it by themselves. Exactly. Although... <laughs> I have something coming out. I believe I may have signed an NDA for it, so I'm going to escape. No names, no names. However, this gentleman, we did some guerrilla filming, and this gentleman was the sound man, the cinematographer, the wardrobe. He wow. was everything. He did everything by himself. If he could have been the actor, he probably would have been, huh? I'm wondering now if he did a cameo. <laughs> but he, uh, he put us in some really scary situations really though like some situations that maybe we shouldn't have been put in but it's all worth it for this thing that's coming out um i can say it is about crooked cops okay uh but it's a true story oh shoot a group of crooked cops mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that are working in cahoots and i don't know why i have a great feeling about that film oh that's awesome no Super names, but I'm excited. To yeah. I'm excited. And that is scary just in general, telling that story. I believe he may have yeah. had some threats. Yeah. 
I, I could imagine. Kind of <laughs> yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of things lately about that, about um, them having their own gang, multiple gangs within their departments and stuff. And the girl that's like, um, you know, doing all the journalism on it, she's had quite a few threats. Do you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Her name is um, Castle. Something Castle. Oh, okay. I believe. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, but, she's... So you just did some a project she, involving the It's same. funny that you say that because yeah. it's... Okay. It's along the lines of that, Cerise Castle. Um, she is one brave girl. Yeah, very, very brave, very intelligent, very courageous to tell that story. Right. And to expose everything. <laughs> everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She we'll really, spill some tea when the cameras turn she off. She <laughs> really got into that. She really got into that. I, I got to give her credit for that because. Most people are just so fearful. Yeah, for sure. They would shy away from telling the truth because mm -hmm. it's just better to sweep it under the rug and act like oh, it didn't yeah. happen. It's safer sometimes that way. So before we started, we're going to change it up really quick. Before we started filming, I asked you to write down 10 words. I love playing this game with some of my guests. <laughs> um, it is called First Thoughts. Okay. okay. So I'm going to read you my first five. Okay. And then we'll trade off and vice versa. You have to give me your first thought. Okay. No thinking, no um, no phoning a friend. <laughs> I don't get a lifeline? <laughs> no lifeline, no lifeline. Okay. okay, your first word. Candle. Meditation. Runner. She's a runner, she's a track star. <laughs> Shot. <sighs> now I'm thinking about it. <laughs> You're fired. Uh, I'm just kidding. Shots, 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 shots. Everybody, okay, rogue. You know what? I what came to mind was what the <laughs> <laughs> spit it out. <laughs> that pimps when they when <laughs> when pimps have like you know they have their girls uh -huh. and there's a girl without a pimp. She's a rogue hoe. I believe she's called a. Ro it might she's be a rogue hoe. Else. A renegade. Renegade. Something. Like I don't want to. Something know. along the lines of that. But I that's don't want to know how me. you know that. <laughs> I've met some pimps before. <laughs> And they had some rogos. And they had some rogues. <laughs> okay, number five, peanut. Peanut head. <laughs> okay, now you're five. Peanut head is something my uncle used to call me. I don't peanut know head? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. Okay. X. <sighs> Good riddance. <laughs> <laughs> Ghetto. Fabulous. Whiskey. Drinker. Frisky. I plead the fifth. <laughs> Cursing. All the time. <laughs> okay, how are yours? All right, number six, porn star. I don't know if the camera caught that, but his eyes got really big. Wow. Um, not me. Okay, gold. Lion. All right, jail. My brothers. <laughs> Casino. I love the casino. Me too. That's why I wrote it down. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big, I like slots. Which one do you like to go to? In San Diego. In San Diego. Yeah. Pachanga though. Like, Pach yes. I, I lived by Pachanga. Okay, me. cool. Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> there was this a girl that back in school, people used to call her Birote Face. And they also called her Bigfoot. So that's what is what, birote, birote Face? Birote Face? Like she had a beard? A torta. Oh. Torta, you know, torta bread is yes. a birote. birote. Okay. That's what they called her, but they also called her Bigfoot. So that's what came up for me. She popped into your head. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> I, I, let's not talk about it. Yeah, her. we're no names. No names. <laughs> and we don't think that about you if you know that we're... Yeah, I, if, yeah, yeah please don't watch know, this. Yeah, shh. Okay, go ahead. Delusional. Oh, many people. <laughs> Cranky. I am, sometimes. Trump. Supporter. You are? <laughs> okay. Off camera, off camera. <laughs> Old school. Funk. Stupid. Oh, oh my gosh, that's like, takes me back in the days. <laughs> like cruising down Bristol, that's stupid, wow. eh? <laughs> That's, okay. That's funny you say that because we have a, because you guys have like a Bristol. They have a Whittier, right? Mm-hmm. In San Diego. Sunset too in Hollywood. Okay, Sunset. In San Diego, it's Highland Avenue. Highland Avenue. That's where everyone cruises? Yeah. Did you ever cruise the boulevard? Oh, yeah. Really? My, my father had a barbershop right off of Highland 
avenue too so like a mm. lot of low riders would come and park at the barbershop and stuff like that that's so. cool and now after 20 uh, something years mm -hmm. they just made it like legal to cruise highland again. oh my god yeah. is there are there cruisers out there now yeah yeah really? i won't be out there but yeah. there's some cruisers out there absolutely <laughs> i'm wow. not gonna I be out i think i heard of that too where in bristol too they were like making it like you know legal to cruise again in bristol and i'm like yeah, okay. yeah now it's like boring you know what i mean <laughs> it's it's better when you can't do it and you now do it now it's not for me yeah yeah for sure for sure but back then for sure i used to love it that's awesome okay so we talked about your you know how, how you deal with being on set with not so friendly environment and stuff um what has been your favorite gig thus far something that's never coming out really mm -hmm. it's never gonna be i mean i can't say never okay but i worked on something that i thought i made it like, mm -hmm. oh, this was it. Yeah. There was all these big name people in it. Mm -hmm. Huge production, you know. Um, and uh, you ever met Joe Santana before? You know Joe no. Santana? Okay. So I'm in this film with Joe Santana. Shout out to Joe Santana. And we're like homies in mm -hmm. the film. And... Um, <laughs> do, we take a, do we take a break? Should we take a break? We're going to take a really quick break. Only want to share with y'all like a bird have a bear for y'all. And we are back. Thank you guys for your patience. We had a little technical difficulties happening in studio. So you were saying Joe... Santana. Santana. Yeah, I have uh, not had the pleasure of meeting him. Good friend of mine. Uh -huh. um, and we got to play homies in this film so we already had the charisma yeah right? like we already had, had the, the energy already the chemistry yeah, yeah we already had the chemistry um and concrete live was the director so concrete live wow. is just amazing period i'm a huge fan of concrete live and it was nice to be able to work with him falcon pictures shout out to pictures mm -hmm. and i just met the most amazing team on set yeah uh they're my favorite crew so that's definitely you know me a memory and energy you're going to take with you totally, totally yeah and you said that movie or show might not ever come to light may not ever see the light of day but i think that's one thing that actors have to know mm -hmm. is that there's a lot of projects we work on where we get cut out of yeah or the project, the person making the film just never finishes mm -hmm. or something happens within the budget or what have you. And yeah. It just, there's sometimes there's some things that are never going to make the light of day. And you know what? I've met a few yeah. actors and you're the first person that said that. And that's something that you, when you think about being an actor, you don't think about that. That's not right. spoken of like, hey, you might work on this project that you're going to fall in love with and this character and then get cut or it never sees the light of day or, right. or anything like that. How did that affect you moving forward, working on that project? Uh, I'm disappointed. I'm still disappointed. I'm, yeah. I'm still a little heartbroken about I could feel one. it. However, it, meeting these people, I mean, it, it's the, the domino effect. Like, I feel like, you know, if, if I hadn't done that project, I wouldn't have met these people. And I worked on three or four projects with them. Wow. Um, Ghetto Busters. It's, it's hilarious. Mm -hmm. uh, and... We also worked on a film called um, Soldados, which was, and it was a short film, mm -hmm. but it was about Chicanos in the Vietnam War. Oh. And when Chicanos died in the Vietnam War, mm -hmm. they marked us as white people when they would count the bodies up. Hmm. So this guy, his name's Charlie Trujillo, he wrote books about all this stuff and has documentaries, but he... This is his version of what went on from the Chicano perspective. Wow, I and, like uh, that. And he's trying to get funding for that okay. right now still to try. He still wants to make this movie, have it made. And you would think funding for that would just come so easy because that's a story that, you know, that we need to tell. Totally. Our version, totally, our, totally. our perspective. We're going to talk about the off screen for well, sure. And he got the short film done. Okay. You know, I believe he's just in the process of getting the seed money of, of you know, getting his film made yeah but it's his baby mm -hmm. you know he he's i know that feeling it's his baby and he doesn't want to like um i think he just wants to have some control over it for so, sure you know you don't want to compromise your art oh, your vision right? too i'm sure your he vision, has right. a, he has a clear vision of totally. of, of totally. where he wants his baby to end up you know in life right. as an adult you know what i mean i i get it completely Wow, that's cool. So you're part of that film as well. Oh, uh, the short film. The yes. short film, yes. Yes, and um, 
I just think that because it was kind of rushed and everything, mm-hmm. and, and uh, I feel like it came out okay. Yeah. But it has so much potential to be great, and I feel like this gets in the right hands, and it's going to be an amazing. Yeah. It's going to be an amazing film. You know what I really I see in you is that it, you're. Your team energy. Do you know what I mean? Totally. Like when we were talking off camera, you were you were telling me about um, concrete on oh, the back man. of the motorcycle. Man. And that guy's amazing. Yeah, you like, you glow for other people. Do you know I mean you want everyone to win? I can feel that. I can feel the energy from you. I get to be a fan, like, mm-hmm. and and still work with these people that I'm a fan of. And, yeah. And you know, um, see people in their greatness. Mm-hmm. I, I think the one thing that is cool about being an actor is that when we go on set you're going on set with a whole bunch of other people that are following their dream yeah like these people are living their dream Mm -hmm. if it's the guy who's holding the boom mic you know the guy who's doing the lighting like the everyone it takes everyone to make this Mm -hmm. thing happen and i had a pa once tell me that he's worked every single job Mm -hmm. on the set so that when he runs his own set and someone doesn't show up or someone's fallen short somewhere, he knows how to do everything. Wow, that's and smart. And I just think that's amazing. Like, mm-hmm. there, there's people out there that are like that. Yeah. There's people out there that are making it happen, you know, that that make sure they know how to do everything. Yeah. And that's amazing to witness. Mm-hmm. So you've done a national commercial, correct? Mm-hmm. Um, and you've worked on shows, series, short films. What genre haven't you done? Like, have you done a horror movie, like scary movie? I have not done a horror movie yet. Do you want to? I'm open to it, but I'm not a fan of horror movies. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I'm, oh, I'm definitely open to it. Absolutely. Yes, yes. I do want to do it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. What, what else haven't you done yet that you want to do? Um, like, I want to do something where it's like a biography. Like, mm-hmm. I want to do something where it's a real person mm-hmm. and I'm having to do some research on... Mm-hmm you know what that person was like or maybe talk to their family yeah and um really delve into that character Mm -hmm. Uh, i haven't done that yet okay so like a main character in a in a non-fiction movie a true story i don't have to be a main character okay but yes like i I do want to do something that's non-fiction that is an actual person that something Mm -hmm. that actually happened yeah how many true stories or biographies have you worked on I don't think, any, well, the Chicanos in Vietnam thing, yeah. but I believe those characters were like loosely based on the people that, yeah. you know, he was, was in, were in his company. Yeah. Have you ever done any uh, voiceover? No, but I'm Is it just something you would starting. Do? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I would do it. Okay. Absolutely. Cool, cool. I don't have the equipment for it right now though. Yeah. Like you have to have some really yeah. good or equipment. Yeah. Or a closet, that. a really good microphone. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. I hear you. Okay. Um, what is the dream? Like like your ultimate, like, oh my gosh, I want to be in one of his movies or I want to act alongside this person. Like what is like the biggest? What's rare about it is there's this lady, Ava DuVernay. Do mm-hmm. you know who that is? No, but I'll look her okay. up. Okay. Ava DuVernay. Um, I just feel like her movies really pull the heartstrings. Okay. They really, they really punch you in the face. Really? <laughs> right. And and then, I I mean, I love, you know, like Denzel Washington, you know, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Like if I was to make a movie with Robert De Niro or Al Pacino or something, I'd be... The greats, right? Right. Totally. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, even Concrete, mm-hmm. let's go back to Concrete. Because okay. Because I've seen Concrete do so many amazing things and I've worked with them a couple times, but I feel like like he's next type mm. of thing right um there's a girl that is an up-and-coming actress named sonia Balcazar. yes mm-hmm. she's amazing I-, I feel like she's along the lines of like annie gonzalez mm-hmm. uh, uh gina rodriguez yeah. type of thing um or maybe even better i just really like these are people who I just feel like are the future. Yeah, you know? I see that. And you'd love to work alongside them, huh? Absolutely. I can't wait to see Concrete in um, Sam's Cry. <laughs> totally. Right? I wish I could have been a part of Sam's Cry. I was supposed to be. Yeah. But things didn't line up. 
And yeah, that's but fine. still, you left a mark on Angel Ray. You uh, really did. You left an impression on her. Shout out to Angel Ray. <sighs> She's, amazing. She's amazing. She is. But um, I had only seen Concrete in the comedic light. Mm. So when I got a chance to see some of the previews of that movie, I'm like, whoa, this is him, Mr. Comedy, Mr. Funny Guy. And then um, I was, I do a top five music video and I saw they're directed by Concrete. I said, holy hell, he can do everything. Okay, we see you. When I worked with him, we went to like a rap party for, or no, we went to the premiere of Ghetto Busters. Mm -hmm. And uh, his best friend said to me, there's nothing, this like this, this guy's good at everything. That's awesome. Like, golf cinematography <laughs> comedy like just directing he's an actor. yeah he's just, and he's a dad man. and he's a he's totally, a husband totally. and like he just, and a host yes right? i know right yeah I, I worked on something with him that i'm not sure is going to come out either okay but um i'm hoping to see it one day yeah like it but was you a had small a good thing time. but yeah i had a good time with him got to meet his mom and like jay valentino's mom and stuff yeah. like that so it's really cool that's awesome cool guys man so if there's a young kid out there watching this interview and he wants to get into acting what advice would you give him don't do it <laughs> he's lying um i mean i really am saying don't do it if as a it's kid not something that you want to truly pursue uh -huh. like i think a lot of people want to dabble a lot of people want to try it out yeah and that's cool you know you can get on you know be an extra on set and you can get a lot of um insight as to how it works and what's going on yeah and you'll be able to even network if you're an extra on set so i think just get yourself on set mm -hmm. but um i don't think people really understand what it takes and what comes along with it mm -hmm. and so they Good actually and bad, do right? it right mm -hmm. and so uh i've i'd sacrificed a lot and yeah. i'm still not where i want to be okay but i feel like there's a lot more to it than what it looks like on the surface a lot more and, than what people right. show right and you know, don't expect to be a celebrity overnight. Exactly. Probably be like a I don't think 15 good. year process. Yeah. But I think that, I mean, some, I've seen a lot of stories. But I don't think it's good to become a celebrity overnight. Sometimes it's too much too fast. And sometimes I've seen Hollywood burn people out, right. like burn the stars out. They're great. But then they shove them down our throat so much that we as the audience get tired of them. Or we're just like, okay, that person's on every movie. Or they're like, like Stephen Urkel. You know, mm -hmm. he's always going to be Stephen Urkel, yeah. right? But, I mean, I'm sure he can play other roles. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like Screech. That's yeah. totally just Screech yeah. forever type of thing. Has right? something like that ever happened to you where you're typecasted over and over again? Like, you're only going for certain roles? Um, you know, I am always a cartel guy or a cholo. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the one thing that's cool about Darman is that I get to be a good guy all the time. Yeah. Not all the time, but I get to be a good guy. And um, I think Latinos are portrayed as bad guys all the time. And I think yeah. this a little bit, you know, but I can honestly say that for me, it's way more fun to be a cartel guy yeah. or a cholo or something like that. And my brothers are cholos. Mm -hmm. like, so one of the things I, I've heard actors, I've heard a couple actors tell me they'll never play a cholo, which is kind of crazy. But Hispanic actor? Yes. Yeah. But for me, I... Like, my brothers were always cholo. I was always around a bunch of cholos. Mm -hmm. And I want to bring humanity to that character. I see cholos with their kids and yeah. as uncles. And, and um, in a different light. You know, my than brother what was a barber. Yeah. You know, my father was a barber too, but my brother was a barber. You know, he cut hair. He it, He's really funny. He's There's, there's just so many different layers mm -hmm. to the cholo than I think what we see on television. Wow. That's so deep. That's so cool that you're like, I want to keep playing it because I'm going to show you guys something different. Right. And it's not that. just, and I've also known a cholo that was the best salesperson I've ever seen in my entire life. I, I was in sales for a very long time. Really? And best salesperson I've ever seen in my entire life was a cholo. <laughs> Taught me how to make hundreds of thousands of dollars over the phone. Wow. You had the gift of gab, huh? You know, you just, when you're in phone sales, you can be whoever you want over the phone. So. You can act. 
totally. Exactly. So he was, he was amazing. <laughs> That's cool. Before we go, Rolando, not only do I want to tell you thank you so much for being here, and I would love to have you on again and again and again and again, because <laughs> I just love to hear what you have to share with us, because it's so authentic and real. And I just love that you glow for other people as well, and not just thank for you. yourself. I think it's very um, rare. You know, especially in this industry. So that's amazing. Don't ever, don't ever change. I, I will find you on the red carpet, bro. <laughs> I will find you. But um, do you have a last message for your fans or for our viewers? Uh, yes. My message to everyone is that you're good enough to be, to do, or to have anything you want in life. Yeah. And if you're doing something, you and I talked about this. Yeah. What episode is this? Like episode 100, episode No, 68. not even yet. Not even like 50, I think. Episode 50, okay. maybe. You're doing it. Yeah. How many people are actually thinking about doing something? Like I'm thinking about, oh, getting into acting. I thought about it for years mm -hmm. and never pulled the trigger and actually did something. So if you're doing something, like just keep going. Yeah. You're, you're, you're. 97% further along than people who aren't doing something. Mm -hmm. So if you've done something, you wrote a script, you, whatever it is you've done, like yeah. you're, to me, just keep going. You're winning because you're doing it, You're right? winning because you're doing it. That's awesome. I love that. Thank you so much. Thank all of you guys for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Where can they follow you? Uh, Instagram at rgonzalez619. Yes, rgonzalez. I had to guess what his name was. I threw a couple of random ones out there, like Reagan, no? <laughs> Roberto. Roberto, <laughs> yeah. Okay, you guys, thank you for watching The Crown Peach Show. I'm your host, Chris. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, comment, and if you send me a message, please kiss it. Keep it simple, sexy. That's how we do. Return to the noise, that's how we do. How we do. You know it's how we do. He goes, kick off your shoes, relax your feet, okay. keep your iceberg, step tail, bring the heat, yeah. class is in session, everybody take a seat.